and I'll start the presentation. So uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for taking the time to come along uh, and listen in this evening. Um, and as I'm sure expecting, this evening's presentation is going to be on the new dive leader course and the revised oxygen admin course. If you have any questions, um, can I ask that you put them in, in the chat, please? I'll be I'll be monitoring it and I'll either pick it up as we go through or I'll pick them all up at the end. And there will be plenty of opportunity to ask questions or to discuss things or whatever you would like uh, at the end. So I'm hoping that a um, few of the people on here were, were on the presentation that I did in April, talking about through some of the DTP updates that were planned for uh, this year. And at that time, I, I, I used that slide, which given that it was Easter, I, uh, I referred to as my Easter egg slides. Now, hopefully most people are aware that we've already uh, delivered the bottom bit of that. So the updated sports diver has had the BLS and AED updates from the, the O2 admin course and also has seen a sports diver depth progression going to 40 meters. And that is out there and is live. And through the app, we can see people getting signed off for the, uh, for the sports diver depth progression, which is great. Um, Chris has just asked if a copy of the recording could be made available. Yes. Uh, Chris, it will be, and it will be emailed out uh, in one of the, uh, the kind of regular up, uh, email updates that, that we send. So that will be available. So uh, the 2023 updates, the, the next update was obviously the uh, Dive Leader 23, which is what we're here to talk about this evening, and the O2 admin course. And they both went live on the 6th of June. So obviously I was very pleased about that. And then to follow on uh, later on in the year will be the D module, um, although that name may change and that will be the way for, for people to uh, to get their depth to, to 50 meters because uh, that isn't in Dive 23. And a bit further on in the year, there'll be revisions to the DPM and the PRM uh, SDCs. So that's the kind of uh, the, the plan in, in outline terms. Before I talk about the details of the, the specific courses, I'd just like to uh, talk about the materials. Um, and this is for both Dive Leader 23 and the new Oxygen Admin course. And hopefully you've started to see some of these materials. Uh, they are similar to ones we've done for other courses. Uh, as you see that new format, clean, bright, modern. They're phone friendly, so they're uh, uh, A5 format. As you can see there, that, that's a screenshot of the, uh, the student guide for the dive leader course. And we believe that people are increasingly looking at the materials now on their phones. So therefore it is, um, it's important to give them in formats that they, that they that are easy to use on the phone. And obviously, and that's the same for both instructor manuals and the student guides. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention uh, the new courses are only, also only available in digital so the that's obviously some people have strong feelings about that what i would say is one of the, one of the great things is it means that we can rapidly make changes to manuals we don't have to wait till we've used all the existing stock we don't have large amounts of money tied up in in, in stock that could become obsolete and hopefully many of you will be aware that we do we are now regularly issuing updates to instructor manuals and also student guides as well. And, and to support that, one of the things that we've done is we have um, we've put amendment logs into the front of most of the manuals, and I will show you those later on. And there's also amendment amendment logs in visual aids as well. Um, so somebody's asked, why do we have phone friendly instructor theory lessons? Well, the visual aids are not phone friendly. They're, uh, they're designed for delivery on a, a big screen. It's the manuals that are phone friendly. So you can, you can read your instructor manual on your phone. If you're on a dive site, you can, you can download the relevant instructor manual for that dive and it's easy to read on your phone. Somebody's uh, unmuted themselves. So can you, can you mute yourself, please? I think that's you, Richard. You keep on unmuting yourself. Um, the other thing that we, we offer with the new courses is e-learning. Now, once again, that's something that people have strong views on. 
what I would say is, is e-learning is really popular. So once again, somebody's on mute to themselves. So I'm getting a load of echo. Can you just check and make sure that you're muted, please? Um, so e-learning is really popular. Lots of people seem to want it. So if I give you a feel for that, we reckon um, of the Dive Leader 23 packs that have been sold since the course was launched, approximately 70% of them uh, have gone out with e-learning. So that, that's really interesting. I think what it shows is, is that people want to get the theory done relatively quickly. Uh, they don't want to necessarily wait for um, to, to get the lectures in, uh, you know, when their club or, um, you know, whoever's instructing them can deliver it. So we're seeing a lot of that. The uh, new e-learning is um, available. Uh, it's in a format that works well in the app. So therefore, um, you can you can easily use it on a phone rather than the older systems are a bit more tricky. Uh, some of the other courses don't work quite so well. Uh, sorry, don't work, work quite so well on phones. Having said that, some of the process of purchasing our our e-learning is uh, is not the world's uh, easiest. So there is some challenges around that. But once you've got through the purchasing system, it does actually work uh, pretty well. Uh, so those materials available for all for both courses, both the oxygen admin and the uh, the dive leader course. So moving on there to the um, to the oxygen admin course. Well, really the oxygen admin course is more of a um, refresh than it is a, a completely new course. But what it does do is we've also used the opportunity to make sure the information in sports diver. DL23 and the O2 admin course, uh, particularly around BLS and AED, is coherent. We've also brought in uh, new material, new information. So IPO is in the mall, for instance, and it and it says basically the same thing. So we think that's important. And also the O2 admin course uh, has the option to do it uh, to, to deliver the training with a, a bag valve mask if you are somebody who's appropriately qualified for that. Um, and if you have any questions about whether you think you are qualified, then I'd encourage you to get in touch with John Parler, who's the uh, safety chief examiner, and he will give you guidance on that one. Um, so I've just seen a question from Lucy Rutherford about e-learning. What I would say, Lucy, is there is information on the website about how the e-learning system works, including some example pages that is available to instructors. So you can see how it works. Um, what I would say is if, if you don't know where those pages are, later on in the presentation, I'm going to show um, you some, we're going to go onto the website, and I'm going to show you some stuff on the website. If I forget to do it, could you remind me then and I'll, I'll show you where you can get access to that, that information for instructors. So, moving on, uh, comparison of the old and the new courses. So, the old course is, um, it was said you had to be an ocean diver to do it, but really you had to be a sports diver. And the reason for that is because there wasn't a um, a way easily for the uh, for people to do BLS, which you do need before you start the oxygen admin course. The new oxygen admin course has a optional foundation BLS module, so you can do that with people who aren't divers or are ocean divers and. So therefore, you know, hopefully that will widen the pool who can get, who can, who can do the SDC. And if uh, you do the optional BLS practical, which is SP1, then you can also get that element of the sports diver course signed off. The rest of it is broadly similar. There's a similar number of theory lessons. I'll say there's e-learning, which there wasn't for the old course. And there's also the option to do it as a refresher. Um, you know, and we, we encourage people to do that, obviously, uh, periodically. So that's the, the the new oxygen admin course. The new uh, dive leader course is not an update. It's really a ground up review. And since the, the old dive leader course was published in about 2009, and since then, an international standard uh, has been produced, which is about dive leading. That's the ISO number for it there. Along with all the other major training agencies, BZAC was part of the uh, committee that, that agreed what would go in the ISO. We signed up to make sure all our courses are coherent with it. Um, and although the old course was accredited to that ISO, the reality was 
it, it wasn't a great fit and you could argue that some things weren't missing. Uh, so, sorry, some things were missing. So this time we started off with the ISO as the um, as, as the baseline. And then what we did was we added the extra bits onto it that we thought were relevant uh, for us. Um, not surprisingly, the, the kind of key three areas that the, the course focuses on are dive leading. Uh, that's not just in experienced divers, but also experienced divers. And hopefully that recognizes the fact that we use dive leaders for doing more than just leading in experienced divers. We use them to do depth progression would be, would be a, a good example, uh, but also uh, to introduce divers to new experiences um, and to help instructors and those kind of things. The, there's also a focus on dive management, which is what you'd expect, and a focus on rescue management. So I, I don't think there's any great surprises in, in any of that. In, in any of that, what we did though is when we went through this process, we realised that there were things in the current dive leader course, the the 09 course, that didn't actually necessarily fit with the ISO, and we, in order to make the the, the dive leader course um, achievable, I guess as quickly as possible. We've broken those things out and made them uh, optional. So a good example would be some elements of the PRM and DPM courses. So for instance, um, the, the, the dive leader theory lesson about helicopters, helicopter rescue, for instance, that's not relevant to, to all our clubs and branches, um, not least anyone overseas. It was, it was heavily UK focused. Um, we've also, um, Things like um, lift and shift, which and uh, midwater delayed S and B, which are fantastic skills, uh, you know, really good skills, but but aren't you know relevant for all our our clubs and branches. Those things have been broken out, and they're there still as um, things, still as lessons, and they can still be signed off, but they're not essential in order to get the dive leader twenty three qualification. And, and probably the thing that's caused the um, the most discussion is is the fact that the new dive leader course will no longer be um will no longer give the option to do depth progression to 50 meters um so again that's not a core part of the iso um also that we you know with the new knowledge that we have we think there's there's additional things people need to know when they're diving between 40 and 50 meters um additional ways of planning um you know all that kind of stuff so we've broken that out and that will be published later on in the year in the deeper the deeper module. Um, so, uh, Peter was asked, "Does this mean if the equivalent table of other bodies' qualifications will need to change?" And, and, and the answer to that is is no. By and large, all the major agencies have got their um, have got their qualifications lined up to the same level. So, for instance, Dive Master, um, Paddy Dive Master, is accredited to the same ISO that Dive Leader is accredited to. So. And it's one of the things that's allowed all the agencies actually to to make their courses, uh, you know, to give each other equivalents. So, um, no, I, I don't see it changing is, is the um, is the short answer. So a bit of comparison again. Um, the first thing there is prerequisite. Not surprisingly, you've got to be a sports diver. Or equivalent. Um, one of the things uh, with the 23 course is you need to have oxygen admin. SDC in order to gain the dive leader qualification. Now, you don't need to have it to start the dive leader qualification, and some bits of it are obviously not linked. So, for instance, there's a, a part of the dive leader course that is about um, dive leading. You don't need the oxygen admin for that, but there's a part of the dive leader course that is about rescue management and rescue skills. You do need the oxygen admin course for that, um, and hopefully that makes sense. We've also said that. Um, you need to have done the oxygen admin SDC within two years of taking the theory assessment for dive leader. So you've got to put a marker in the sand and, and that's what we, we, we put. If you don't do that, there's an optional theory module um, that you have to do, which effectively refreshes on BLS and um, uh, some of the diving disorders and, and those kind of things. There's also an optional um, practical module and that's uh, aims to cover all sorts of things, for instance. Um, a good example would be, let's say you have another agency diver coming who wants to start training towards dive leader. You could use the open water session to show them some of our skills and drills. 
if you have somebody coming from warm water to cold water, once again, the, the refresher module will be an opportunity to get them in a dry suit, get their weighting sorted, all that sort of thing. If you have somebody who hasn't done any skills and drills for a while and wants to get themselves back up to speed, that would be another example of how you would use the optional module. Um, Steve, your question that you just put in chat, I'm going to I'm going to pick up later on if you don't mind. Um, in terms of theory lessons, you can see there the 23 courses is, is much shorter than the 09 course. And that's partly, of course, because some of the theory lessons have gone into the oxygen admin course. But it's also because we've, we've taken some of the stuff out as well. Uh, E-learning I've talked about already. Uh, we've also got marginal. We've got a slightly smaller number of um, open water lessons, five versus seven. And that's because we've made some of the stuff optional, like, as I say, the lift and shift and the, um, the midwater DS and B. We've slightly increased the number of dry practicals. So there's two dry um, uh, practicals for dive management and one for rescue management. The total number of dives are, are mandated by the ISO. And then the experienced dives, what we've tried to do is make them relevant to the local conditions for your specific club or, or branch or, or wherever you do your diving. And um, that's a, um, a requirement of the ISO. Um, thank you very much, um, live for, for picking up Jessica's question there. It's actually within two years of um, doing the uh, dive leader theory exam that you need to do the um, uh, oxygen admin SDC. Otherwise, you have to do the, the theory refresher. Um, David, um, yes, uh, you've asked me if assessments can be done after each theory session as they can now with Ocean Diver. The answer to that question is yes, they can. And we hope people will do that. So uh, what I'd like to do now is um, show you some of, I'd just like to quickly run through the website and show you some stuff. Hopefully uh, people are familiar with the website and you're familiar with the instructor materials area, which has obviously got the diver training session. Um, it's logged me out, unfortunately. But once I'm logged in, uh, hopefully we'll be looking at the, the DTP section of, of the uh, instructor materials. And what you can see there is here in the dive leader, you can see dive leader 23 and dive leader 09. Dive leader 23 is, uh, is obviously the new one, and dive leader 09 is for those people um, uh, who are still on the old uh, on the old system, and, and we're aware there's going to be quite a lot of those. So if we go into the dive leader 23, you can see there's some frequently asked questions there. There's um, a link to the previous materials there for those who missed it on the page before. Then what we've got is the standard uh, overall instructor manual, which I'll show you in a minute. We've got a dive experience guide, which is for some of the dives, the, uh, the trainee dive leaders have to um, take somebody on an experience dive. And that gives you some guidance on, on what those should consist of. Common dive components. Um, some of the other courses have got things like entries and exits and ascents and descents built into every single uh, open water lesson rather than having that repetition for dive leader we've brought them all out and stuck them in this 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 uh, document here so you'll be able to see that when i go into it um we're hoping people will use the um the app to record um uh, the training that goes on but if you if you are going somewhere where there's no connectivity or you want to use a paper qrb then you can download it there this is the uh, practical refresher. Then we've got the, um, the different um, open water lessons. These are the optional lessons that I talked to you about, the midwater DSMB and the uh, lift and shift. Practical lessons, um, theory lessons, and the, um, uh, as you can see there, theory lessons, including the theory review, which is the optional refresher. There's the, the visual aids for the theory lessons, some assessments if you're doing it in, in uh, uh, one big session, there's two papers there. There's some prompt slates, um, which you could, which are PDF, you can download and print them out if you want to. And then there is um, the normal casualty assessment form. This down here is document change record, which you will see uh, in, uh, in many of the manuals. So that is the, the dive leader 
bit of the website. If we go to Oxygen Admin, you'll find Oxygen Admin is uh, down here, Oxygen Admin 23. If you want the old materials, you can find them there. There's more frequently asked questions, an instructor manual, a QRB, same as the other one. And then there's a practical lessons and the theory lessons, um, including the optional uh, BLS lesson and some theory assessments, very similar. If you want to do a refresher in your club, there's a declaration here from the instructor and the student. Once you've done the refresher, send it to us and we will update our records to reflect um, the, um, uh, we'll, we'll update records on the systems. So uh, moving on to the, the actual PDF files. So this is the instructor manual for the dive leader course. So you can see it's in the A5 format. One of the things to help people move around, you'll see these are all links. So if you wanted to know about the experienced dives, for instance, you could click on experienced dives and it would take you to this section here. Click on the go back button and it will take you back to the contents page. Um, and you know we hope that will help with usability. Next page, there's a document change record and we're then into the, uh, the, the rest of the course. And you can, uh, if you haven't already done so, I would encourage you to, to have a read through that. This is common dive components. So this is, as you can see, ascent, descent, DSMB, et cetera, et cetera, all sorts of stuff in there. Once again, it's got the same thing. So you can, um, you can click backwards and forwards to help with navigation. Dive experience guide, which is, so if you're you know, doing one of these, let's say, for instance, you're doing a, a wall dive, there you go. There's some information on, uh, on a wall dive. There's you know, various different ones in there, so for, hopefully to help. This is the uh, QRB here. So if you want to use paper ones, you can sign them off. And um, what I'd say is if you do use a paper one, you can either upload them to the app yourself when you, when you uh, get the opportunity, or you can email it to us and we will, um, uh, we will upload it for you. Uh, there you go. I've talked a couple of times about the local skills components. So there's Midwater DSMB and Shotline Lift and Shift in there if they're relevant to your uh, your particular conditions. Now move on to the Oxygen Admin course. Very, very similar. Um, applicable links, all the stuff in there you, you'd expect. One of the things I'd highlight is, um, it's not that one, sorry, uh, Appendix A. The syllabus and there's example timetables there. So depending on how you're delivering it, if you're delivering it in an evening or you're delivering it as a refresher or you're using e-learning, there's a whole load of different you know, uh, programs in there. And the last thing there is if you're doing it modular in a modular format and you want to record a bit of training at a time, once again, there's the way of doing that. And you can also do this in the app as well. So we hope that those are uh, different documents are useful to people. So uh, subject dear to everyone's heart, I'm sure, is training pack prices. So current Dive Leader 09 pack prices are on the left. Dive Leader 23 packs are on the right. So there's no paper pack, as I already explained, for Dive Leader 09, but we've kept the, the digital pack price the, the same. Obviously, if you want to do e-learning, it's there. Uh, if you want to do O2, by digital and e-learning, you can see the different pack prices there. This one here, sorry, this one should say combined dive leader digital and O2. Um, that's £47.50. So I guess you could say that because dive leader 09 includes the O2 admin course and it's an optional extra for the dive leader 23, the effect is a £10 increase, uh, increase there. Um, what I would say though is there is a cost associated with updating materials and um, you know producing all the stuff that we that we've done and and I think a, a ten pound increase I think is 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 relatively reasonable when you consider it's in my opinion it, it's a much better set of materials than what we've we've had previously. So uh, those are the pack prices and if you want to do them both together with e-learning, obviously that's it down there. 
So some thoughts on um, Dive Leader 23, and then, then I'll come back to some of the questions. So some of the, the, the negative thoughts, perhaps, is there's no depth progression to 50 metres. Um, what I would say is, is that is obviously true. Um, but I think the, the current course, whilst it stood the test of time and all those kind of things, if you were looking at it with, from a modern point of view, you'd need to put far more information in there about the, the kind of risks that exist when you dive between 40 and 50 metres that aren't in the current course. And therefore, we could either make the current course longer or we could do what we've done, which is to break them out, have them available as a separate um, separate set of training for those people who, who want to do it. And I don't think everybody who does dive leader wants to dive to 50 metres. So therefore, I think that's a, a more appropriate, um, appropriate response. It will allow people who want to get on, say, for instance, and becoming instructors to, to complete their dive leader training quicker, get the bits that are relevant to becoming an instructor done, and then they can um, th then they can move forward with that rather than having to do a whole load of stuff about deeper diving that's not relevant to them. There is the extra cost to the O2 admin. Um, if you buy it as a digital pack, it's uh, if you buy it as a combined pack, it's £10 more. Hopefully, I've explained why we think that is, is, is reasonable. And uh, you could argue that the dive, some diving skills have been removed. Uh, what I would say is, is they've not necessarily been removed, they've been presented differently. So they've become optional for, for people, you know, or, or for clubs where those are relevant. What I would also highlight is that we've added some diving skills as well. So for instance, the ISO has a requirement for a, um, a missing diver search that isn't in the current dive leader course. It is in the dive leader 23. I should probably stop talking about the current dive leader course. I should talk about the old dive leader course. Um, so some some, some uh, positive things to think about it. I hope that you will agree that the, the new course is more modular. So it can be delivered in specific chunks. So uh, one of the questions that I've just seen pop up in the, in the chat, and I'll come back to the rest in a moment, is um, the question, can sports divers do the, uh, the deep module? And the answer to that is yes. So if that's something that they particularly want to do, that is that is uh, something they can do. Um, we have we've given more flexible experience dives, um, so that they're, they're better suited to, to different conditions. There are some clubs that find it very difficult to do uh, some of the um, some of the requirements of uh, the old dive leader course. A really important point I think is um, better preparation for instructor training. So. Um, what, we, what we've done is some of the things that appear in the Instructor Foundation course and the Open Water Instructor course, things like um, REAP for debrief, some of the things like uh, MAP um, in terms of uh, dive management, they are now in the Dive Leader course. Um, so hopefully that will, that will help people. And also the way the course is structured in terms of um, the kind of information on um, leading people, I think, will help people when they come to do their instructor training. We also <coughs> formalise something that's probably been the case for a long time in many clubs, which is that dive leaders can be used to support trainees who haven't yet become ocean divers. So if uh, an ocean diver has done a lesson with an instructor, let's say 002 and 00, or 003, and wants to practice the skills that they've been taught in 002 and 003, they can go in with a dive leader and the, the dive leader has been taught and is now qualified to uh, support them while they, while they practice those skills. They can't teach them new ones, but they can, they can support them while they practice things like mass clearing or um, BV ditch and retrieve or those kind of things that, um, you know, people need to uh, you know need to be good at basically um a positive thing i think it is e-learning and i've already made already explained about 70 or 80 percent of people take the e-learning option or taking the e-learning option for dive lead 23. i see there's a question in there um where somebody asked the difference between digital and e-learning so e-learning is um what you'd expect where online there are um effectively the theory lessons they are delivered as a combination of a flip book, which is a, an online uh, book that you read, 
and interspersed in that are videos where people, where instructors uh, deliver the, the course materials. A digital pack is simply the, uh, the course manual and any associated documents such as um, the, the dive leading manual um, and tables and those kind of things are delivered in PDF format. So, so that's the difference. Uh, the e-learning allows you to get the theory lessons signed off and the assessments. And another positive thing there, I think, is the um, is the improved materials, which um, uh, you know I think are, are dramatically better. Now I've just remembered uh, that I forgot when I was on the website to show you where the information for instructors about e-learning was. So uh, if we go back to the instructor section of the website, and uh, we go down here, there is online learning support for instructors and clubs. If you click on there, there's a whole load of information. The one I particularly draw your attention to is this one here, which is the BZAC e-learning platform, how it works. If you click on there, there's a whole load of stuff, but what I particularly focus you on, and, and, and probably it's not helpfully, it's it, unhelpfully, it's near the bottom of the page, is this here, the sample e-learning page. So if you click on it, you, will, you can go into here, into the Ocean Diver, and this shows you what effectively trainees get. And if you click on these buttons here, you'll be taken through to the e-learning theory modules for the Ocean Diver course. So hopefully uh, that, makes, uh, that makes sense. Right, so I'm just gonna go back to my presentation now. So I'm now going to work through some questions that, that I've, I've had before and I'll give you the answers and then I'll work through the questions in the chat. And I know there is quite a lot of questions in the chat. Hopefully this might cover some of them, though. The first thing is why the cost rise. Now, I hope I've covered that already, which is that there is an expense associated with developing uh, new materials, um, which has to be captured somehow. And... Um, rather than say increasing everyone's membership fees and nobody likes that probably the more appropriate way of doing that is to is to pass some of it on to the people who are benefiting from the from the new materials which is obviously the, the students and, and their training packs um, people who have old training packs are, and are maybe part way through them so if you've got an old somebody's got an old dive leader 09 pack or an old 02 pack they can absolutely continue to use those and they can gain the qualification and they can carry on if they've got the 09 course they can carry on doing the debt progression if they want to um, we're not going to take anything away from anybody who's who's got an old pack so they can continue doing that if, if, if they want to um grandfather rights so um if you have done the dive leader 09 course and you have done debt progression to 50 meters we are not stopping you doing that what we are saying is that you may well benefit from doing the deeper module and you may find some new information out in there and you may find new ways of planning and we recommend you do it, but we're not stopping anybody from doing it. Um, grandfather rights. Um, so uh, that's what I just covered. Crossover process in the materials, in the instructor manual, there is a, a crossover process for people on Dive Leader 09 who decide they want to do Dive Leader 23. And it says, if you've done this lesson, you can be credited against this lesson. Um, what I would say is there's not an awful lot. So it probably makes sense if you're on 09 to carry on on 09, unless you're really close to the beginning of it. Um, uh, but what I would do is obviously, um, there are still 09 physical packs that you can buy from the shop. Uh, the, the, the the paper shop what i would say is i would encourage people to do the dive leader 23 course it's a better course um, and it's probably going to be quicker for them to get the qualification printed and digital materials i think I've, I've covered so we have no plans to make dive leader 23 or the new o2 admin course uh, available uh, by printed form you can print them out uh, the student guide or the instructor manuals or whatever if you want to and because they're A5, you can fit two pages, two you know, two pages on a side of paper, um, and that does work. That works fine. I, I've tried it; it's all good. Um, 
when is oxygen admin required? I think I've covered that already. It, it is explained really clearly in the diluted 23 manual. Um, QRBs, hopefully I've shown you how you can print off QRBs if you want to, but please, you know, I'd, I'd really encourage people to use the app. It is really popular. Um, I think we're, we're, we're nearly at 39,000 signatures on the dive leader. Uh, sorry, not on dive leader, unfortunately, on the app. So um, if you don't know how that works or you want more information, then there is stuff on the web or I can I can stick a link in the in the chat if anybody wants. And the missing skills, I think I have covered um, in, in the sense that they're not so much missing. They are optional. They're in those local skills components. So. Uh, Hopefully that all makes sense. What I'm going to do now is scroll up to the, the top of the question and then work my way down, please. Um, so the suggestion that not having the exam in one session is dumbing down the course. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I agree with that. I think it's it's uh, it's checking for confirmation of knowledge after <laughs> each lesson, which is which is something that we teach instructors to do. Um, and therefore it gives you the opportunity if somebody hasn't understood the lesson. It gives the opportunity to uh, do corrective instruction right there and then with them and hopefully you know help them gain the knowledge uh peter's asked if there's a um uh cost for refresher training no there's no cost for refresher training uh, sorry uh, steve has asked if we think dive leader will be less popular now that you split out the deeper diving um i don't think it will I think, um, I, you know, I'm hoping it'll be more popular because it will be, um, you know, people can, um, it, will, it will focus people more on becoming instructors. It will, it will be something that is more achievable for people. And, uh, you know, for those who want to do the deeper diving, then it will obviously give them the knowledge and information they need to be able to do that. Um, Trivial, but why the L prefix for the lesson ID, not D? Um, the reason for that is, is it, is it, offers a clear differentiation between the two. So, um, you know, um, when you're using the app or when you're delivering training, whether it's uh, the new dive leader course or the old dive leader course. Uh, will exam papers C, D and E be available from BZAC HQ? Uh, we don't currently have exam papers C, D and E, um, but if it becomes apparent that they're required, then obviously we will, it will produce one. Um, so Clive has said, uh, changes to experience dives, should people currently working on the experience dives change the new set or continue with the old set? So if you're on the old course, the 09 course, then you carry on with those ones. If you're on the 23 course, then you should use those ones. Peter's asked if sports divers can do the 50 meter course. Uh, the answer is to that is yes. Obviously there are quite a number of 50 meter courses you can currently do as a sports diver. Um, Sports mix gas would be one. Um, the uh, well, you could do mod three CCR as a sports diver if you want, and, and I know um, lots of people in there. Um, so, question about cost from Kevin: Did I say that the combined dive leader included digital O2 was forty seven pounds fifty, or was both the eighty price? The combined digital pack is forty seven pounds fifty. The combined digital or uh, combined e-learning pack is 80 something pound, 82 or 87 pounds 50. So it's whether you are getting just the digital pack or you're getting the e-learning. <coughs> so um, by and large, you know, all our courses have a, an e-learning premium, which uh, I think is what you'd expect. Um, what's the time frame for new course information to be reflected in the Thai examination if it is indeed relevant? Now, Claire, you are correct. There is some of the uh, old dive leader lessons are in the current uh, list of topics for Thai, and that is it. That is one of my uh, jobs uh, to to fix that to make sure that it's the it's the new ones. Uh, Med is there. Hopefully, I've picked up your point about the difference between digital and e-learning. Steve says, "Are we heading to be like padding with modular, where there's lots of charge for modules?" Uh, to be honest, you could argue that that's what Paddy do. Um, you could also argue that we have had SDCs, which look a lot like modules for a very long time. Um, so we have a boat handling module. We have a, um, 
compressor op ma uh, module we have a um gas blending you know module etc cetera, etc cetera. you know so so this is not a new process to us although i guess we may be calling it you know we may be using that term a bit more than than, than we than we do and just for clarity the, the direction from council has, has been really clear on this one they've said to, to to us when you are developing new courses they must be delivered and it must be uh, rather than big monolithic courses they must be things that can be delivered in smaller bite-sized chunks because they believe that is important for you know so people get a sense of progression so if you if, if it takes you a long time to get something then people obviously um you know can become a bit disheartened or you know lose interest or whatever work whereas if you're getting stuff nice and regularly then uh you know, that does help some people with their incentive to keep on going and keep on getting new things. Um, this question about audio versions for members with reading difficulties. Um, so there's no doubt that is <coughs> clearly somebody's just unmuted themselves. Please, can you, can you mute, mute yourself? Uh, we've all just enjoyed you clearing your throat. Um, so it is something that we would like to do, um, although it is it is quite a tricky thing to do. If you have any particular expertise in that, um, or particularly if you know somebody who could do it, then it I'd really welcome that. Um, although we'd probably start with, um, uh, I guess, Ocean Diver first. I've put my email address in the chat, by the way. So if anybody wants to follow up at any point, you can do that. And uh, Jason, you know, if you want to follow up, please drop us an email there. Uh, Andrew's asked, why can't instructors have access to all e-learning courses so we can see exactly what our students see, sensibly answer their question and hold their hands when needed? Well, Andrew, the e-learning courses are the same as the instructor materials. They are no different. It's just somebody uh, doing a video. Um, of the reasons we don't give instructors access to everything like that is because, and it's really sad to say, some people abuse it um, and you know, it, become, it becomes quite problematic for, um, you know, some of my colleagues who have to field, call, field phone calls from, from people who get really angry because they say, well, I've seen the e-learning, I was given access to it, or I was given a copy of a student guide, and my colleagues have to say, look, I can't give you this qualification unless you pay for it, because it's not fair to all the other people who pay for it. So um, that's, that's kind of why we do it. But if you want to see what's in the e-learning, then please, you know, just go and download the, uh, the visual aids, download the instructor manuals and you can see it there. Um, Peter Grimsey, implications you can go all the way up to advanced mixed diver without becoming a dive leader. Is that correct? Yes, and that is currently the situation uh, right now and has been for, for, for a very long time. Can you explain how the practical elements of the O2 admin would work if the student has purchased e-learning only? Yes, yeah, certainly, John O. So um, obviously, um, it's the same as all our courses, so it's the same as Dive Leader or Ocean Diver or anything where there's a mixture of theory and practical. So you would, uh, the person buys the e-learning, they would uh, do the e-learning theory online, so they get all the theory knowledge. And then what they need to do is find a way of delivering the practical, of achieving the practical. So in an Ocean Diver course, that might be within their, their, uh, their club. Um, so they would go along to a pool session or whatever, and it, and it, or, or they could go to a centre and the centre would deliver it for them. And it's exactly the same with the oxygen admin. All I would say is, is it requires um, less effort by uh, instructors because you don't have to do the theory lessons and the practical lessons. You just have to do the practical lessons. So hopefully that, you know, in, in clubs which are, um, you know, really struggling with, with instructor time, we kind of hope that would help out. Um, so Steve, how will we know how deep a dive leader is qualified to going forward? Well, what I would say is, how do you know how deep a dive leader is qualified to get to now? Because clearly, the 50 meter is a post qualification depth progression. It's not written on any cue cards. The only way you can do, you can find it out, is by looking at their their QRB. Um, so that is the process you're going to have to continue to do. Not all dive leaders, current dive leaders, are qualified to 50 meters. In fact. Probably the majority of them aren't. What I would say is uh, with the app, um, the great thing is we will now be starting to record that and hopefully, you know, people are putting that information in there. 
Um, and M Maria's got a question. Uh, will there be a cutoff date for the old dive leader packs? We're not currently planning to do that, Maria. You know, it can take us, I'm sure you're well aware, a long time for people to get through the dive leader course. So if, if we do decide there is going to be one, then it will be um, quite a long time in the future. And I think we'll give everybody uh, some fairly significant notice. Uh, Barry says, is it advisable to do again as you completed it in 1996? Um, I don't know is a short answer to that, Barry. I guess it depends what you've done in, in the interim. You know, if you've done loads of instructing in the interim and you've been, uh, you know, going through the existing material, the materials as they are, then, uh, and you've been teaching people the new materials, um, I would say probably not. If you've done nothing since 1996, um, in terms of the theory and all those kind of things, then I guess, yeah, it probably would be beneficial for you to, to do it again. Uh, Nick has asked a question on the app. Will it be available on PC uh, slash Windows? Uh, unfortunately, it won't be, Nick. The, the app is a, is a phone only, so iOS and, uh, and Android. Uh, we'd love to have it available on more platforms. And one of the things we are doing is, is looking at further improvements to the uh, IT support we give to our members and our clubs. And you, I'm really hoping that something you know significant will come out uh, in 2024. And that I suspect will be uh, will work on all browsers, regardless of platform. Um, Lucy uh, has asked about a transfer. So if you've got somebody who's a dive leader own pack but hasn't started and wants to transfer to dive leader 23, you can definitely do that. If you drop my colleague uh, Julia an email at um, drt at bzac.com, and I'll put that in the um, in the chat, she will um, she will uh, give you uh, the ability to download one of the new packs, and we will void your old URN or, or your your members URN. Um, oh, yeah, Barry, it's seen, even though you've done some advanced diver lectures, um, it, what I would say, Barry, is, is go to um, somebody in your club, you know, a bit more senior in your club, if you've got an advanced instructor or, or somebody like that, or maybe, um, you know, just get their advice, really, and see what they say. Um, a question there about, is it okay to mix the new O2 admin SDC with O9? Yeah, there's no problems at all. Um, um, to do that, if you have stock of old uh, packs in your club and you want to convert them to the digital pack, uh, you can do that. You can, as I say, email my colleague Julia. She will need to know the URN of the packs that you currently have, and she, we will void those URNs and we will give you new digital uh, downloads uh, to replace them. So, yes, that is an option. Steve says many, most people don't want to be instructors. Um, I think that's a, a certain, you know, an opinion. I'm not entirely sure that's that's um, that's accurate. But if they don't want to be instructors, then they can still do the dive leader course. If they don't want to do the dive leader course and they just want to get a 50 meter depth progression, then frankly, they're better off doing uh, sports mix gas SDC, or they can now do the deeper module, and hopefully that will um, that will that will cover what they want. You know, I don't think what we should be doing is forcing people to do training. Um, we should be giving them training that meets what they want to do. Um, Karen has asked a question about um, if people have done the PRM towards the old, old course. Um, uh, so what I would say is, is lessons that they've completed in probably, Karen, the best thing to do is to have a look at the um, uh, transfer table that's in the, the new instructor manual. And if that doesn't answer your question, please drop me drop me an email, and, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll give you a more detailed response. Um, Kath has said, uh, "Sports diver ADIs have access to all the instructor materials going to advanced diver, so you can see the dive leader exam papers, including the answers." Will this change? Um, the answer to that is not uh, not currently. We need uh, to improve our IT systems before we can do that. So if if you if you have those people, then um, either get them to do the e-learning, which have different exams to the to the ones on the on the papers, or um, you know we'll probably have to produce you uh, an exam paper for that. Uh, David asked about the BVM. If a suitable instructor, uh, what is a suitable instructor? It is somebody who teaches bag valve mask uh, in another capacity. So if you're a paramedic, for instance, or a doctor working in A and E or something like that. 
you will know if you are qualified to to use and teach bag valve mask. If you have any doubts whatsoever, email the safety chief examiner with a list of your qualifications, and uh, they will. Um, John will, will let you know. Uh, Steve, uh, lots of questions from Steve. So, how is modular progression different from signing off on an open water or theory lesson in a non-modular course? Um, I think um, probably module is used in a couple of different ways. So, module is used in the in the sense of within a particular qualification. Uh, dive leader has a number of modules, as you can see there on screen: a skills refresher module, a dive leading module. Those are effectively coherent lessons that fit together. Um, so the rescue module, for instance, contains a theory lesson and it contains some practical lessons and it contains some dry practical lessons. That's a, a kind of coherent element, but modules can also be used as um, courses being delivered a different way. So the dive leader course, you could consider the 09 course as consisting of uh, the core element of the dive leader 09, the 02 and the 50 meters all bundled together. Whereas what we've broken done now is broken them out into three separate, completely discrete modules that can be delivered uh, separately. So the O2 SDC is, is completely discrete, the deep module is completely discrete, and the dive leader 23 is completely discrete. And they can be they can almost be done um, kind of uh, and, and, you know as people want. Um, Gary says, will you eventually be able to instruct open water without becoming a theory instructor, then which seems to be coming obsolete? Um, we aren't changing anything to do with the instructor training system. Um, you know, theory instructor is um, not everybody wants to do stuff by e-learning. So there are still, you know, clubs who, who find uh, theory instruction uh, valuable uh, doing face to face. And there's loads of good reasons. You know, if it works for you, then it works for you. You know, it's a good way of engaging people. You know, it probably is a better way of, of getting information across for people, you know, who struggle. Um, you know, you can use different techniques and all, you can do stuff, uh, you know, you can do stuff far more visually. So it, it doesn't fit everybody. So I think theory and structure is still, is still valuable. Um, but, you know, down the line, we may change the instructor training scheme. Yes. Um, Kev has asked, do we think centres will be able to facilitate this new course easier for members? Um, yes, I think they probably will. Um, and, um, you know, it, that would be a nice thing to, to come out of it. You know, fingers crossed. Um, uh, question, will the sessions be available on the website? You, you missed the first few minutes. Uh, yes, what will happen is we will download the uh, theory for this presentation, either this one or one of the other ones. This is the third one I've done. And that will be emailed out to everybody who got the email inviting you to come along this evening. Um, so, Andrew, last question I've got is if someone has almost completed 09, but just waiting for some more experienced dives, can they just complete those required for dive leader 23? N no, you have to complete the course as it's printed and as it's published. So, um, you know, we're really clear on that. If we started to mix things up and cherry pick, it, it would become really difficult. So you have to choose which course you're doing, basically. Um, so that's the last of the questions in the chat. Um, there's an opportunity um, either if you want to come back at me and you want to talk to me, please unmute yourself and you're welcome to do that. Um, if you want to put something else in chat, you're welcome to do that. Um, I'm here as long as as long as people want to discuss that. Uh, question, I knew it was coming. Are you looking at updating advanced diver course at some point? And the answer to that one is definitely yes. That is, that is you know, hopefully the next thing we'll be doing on the DTP. Um, I think it's unlikely to be called advanced diver. I think it's likely to be called something like expedition diver. Um, I would imagine it would probably consist of a number of uh, <laughs> modular courses. So uh, you would imagine that uh, DPM, uh, PRM, you know, maybe some of the boat courses, um, you know, a few other ones like that, and they'll all be part of it as well. Right, stun silence. <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh, 
I think everybody agrees that we need to change the name of the Levant Sniper. Um, Jessica, will the optional dive leader skills be part of AD? That is potentially, it's, you know, we haven't started work on this, so everything is currently on the table. Thanks, Peter. That's a, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah, but once again, Clive, uh, you, you may well be right, and we will we will have a, a way of you know to record this kind of stuff and and to you know uh, deal with the fact that we'll have multiple different routes. Well, I'd just like to um, to thank you all for coming along this evening. Thank you for um, you know giving up your time and all the stuff that you uh, you do in, in your clubs and branches. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Peter. That's, that's kind. I mean, obviously, change is always is always challenging, and you know, you're never gonna we're never gonna please any every all the people all the time. But hopefully, it makes sense what we're doing. You know, uh, it, it, it's coherent, and you know, you can understand the underpinning logic. <laughs> uh, no, you have to download the course um, individual elements, and the reason for that is maintaining zip files becomes a headache for us, but also um, it just becomes a headache for us whereas we, we put the information up in in the way that we want people to access it which is one one thing at a time it also means that people don't store stuff locally or are less likely to store stuff locally we want them to download the latest materials from the website and use those rather than relying on on you know old copies of my kicking around on hard disks and stuff <laughs> yes, Steve. You've obviously seen I suffered from that this evening as well. Yes. Um, I'll have a word with, with Chris about extending the cookie duration or something. Yeah, Figgy, you're probably right. We, you, nothing ever, nothing's ever um, uh, little, you know, that's new in the world. We, you just go around, go around the boy. Uh, Interesting enough, I remember AD before before it was modular, so uh, it went non-modular, modular, non-modular, non -modular, and it's, uh, it's going back to modular. Right, everybody, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes longer, and then I'm going to um, stop the uh, sort of close the meeting and uh, kick everyone out. <laughs>